Okay, this will be the install of the Mr. Cool outdoor unit. It can work in either four or five ton mode. I've got it in four ton. So this Nylog Blue is rated for R410A refrigerants, and I'm going to use that to seal uh, any connections between the line sets and the adapter and the outdoor unit, and it'll prevent any leaking of refrigerant if there's uh, any tiny gaps or whatnot. So this is kind of an insurance to prevent any leaks from happening. And so the other thing that I bought was a R410 gauge set. I didn't use it, but uh, just in case I need to measure refrigerants and whatnot. So all my tools that I use can be seen in the description below. Uh, not a lot of rocket science tools, just any basic DIY tools you can use to install a heat pump. So when you're mounting your concrete anchors, you want to make sure that you put the outdoor unit on the concrete pad, mark it off, and then once it's marked off, we use a uh, magic marker then do a little pre-drilling on the concrete before you actually use the drill bit. Otherwise, the drill bit will have a tendency to kind of walk away on the concrete and uh, I wasn't paying attention and my little helper let the drill bit walk so I had to re-drill one of the holes. Not a big deal. Uh, just kind of word the wise. And also another thing that helped was taking the, the bit and then measuring out how long the inch would have to be and adding a quarter inch and then some tape onto it and that will give you the exact depth that you need to, to drill the concrete anchors. So adding the line test was probably my biggest concern of the project. If you look at this little pictorial here, basically there's two adapters for the outset unit, two adapters for the inside unit, and the line set, and basically you screw it on. It's really super simple. It, it can't really be made any simpler, and it beats flaring copper. So take the line set out of the box and basically unroll it little by little here as we're showing. Don't try to uh, unroll it in one fell swoop, otherwise you'll try to kink the line, and that's one of the things you want to avoid with HVAC stuff. That's what my concern was. So it's really easy. Okay, so here's the line set. I wish I had given a little bit more um, foam here. And I ran short on the other end, and that could have probably been improved, but other than that, it's kind of how the line sets wrap around. I got these little metal straps I attached. I'm go up and over and probably drilled and back that side. They want to use the nylon blue on the flared end. And basically what that allows you to do, it allows you to seal up that connection and then it makes sure that you can put this adapter on. So you can either use the adapter in the line set or just flare your own line set, which I didn't want to do. The, the line set that they gave you was uh, a lot easier. Anyway, so that's what it does. And this one here, I'm a little bit of problems with trying to get it off. And then I finally got a little bit of, of an additional wrench to kind of yank that off with. So Here's kind of an up close what how you really want to do it. You want to put it on the flared edge. Again, not trying to get it in the hole. It's supposed to be safe if it takes in contact with refrigerant. But you want to take the, the nylog and really get it on that, that edge or that, that flare there. And it, it doesn't hurt to be liberal with it. it all it'll do is it's like snot. It will roll down into threads and then it just gives you a better seal. So here you can kind of see that as I'm going around the, uh, the flare down there with that nylog, it's almost like snot. That's probably the best term I can use for it, but that gives you that, that good seal. And so once you once you have that sealed up, then you can put the adapter on and then you'll be another th be it the same thing on the other end of the adapter and then you'll screw in the line set. So basically that's how it works. And the adapter again lets you use the line set instead of having to flare your own copper and evacuate the system and yada yada yada. And this was what makes the system so great is it allows you to really do all the stuff on your own, you don't need an HVAC tech to do it. Also hand tighten the threads before you use a wrench to lock them down. I didn't want to make sure I wouldn't cross through anything, and so I hand tighten them and then once they were hand tight, then I used the, uh, the wrench here, or the crescent wrench to tighten it down.
Okay, once you have both of the line set ends installed, then you can open the valves. And I'm only showing the outdoor unit, but I've also attached the indoor unit as well. Again, you got to make sure that both the outdoor unit and the indoor unit are attached and locked down with the line set before you open any refrigerant. After you open the valves, you want to make sure it has some soapy water and then spray the connections and look for the adapter on top and bottom to make sure there's no leakage. So the wiring is probably the easiest, most straightforward thing. Here's a schematic of the wiring diagram. And so basically you bring 240 into the outdoor unit and then for the control wires it's yellow to yellow, blue to blue, white to white, red to red, and I think C or common to common. It's literally one for one. Okay, so the same terminals are on the indoor unit and they'll land the exact same color wires. And then the last thing you need to do is just, there's a switch up here on the right hand side, you use that to set four or five times. Really easy. So here's that dip switch I was talking about on the right hand side, that controls four ton or five ton mode. Okay, these are my noise results from the unit. As you can see here, that, uh, that second bolt on the left there, that's where the, the drill bit walked, but other than that, this is our meter here, a download an app on the phone. And we're about 12 inches away from the outdoor unit. We're just going to do some measurements on how loud it is. So ambient noise is right around 45 to 48 dB, and that's with nothing on. That's just the uh, the crickets and the, the wind blowing. So once we kick the outdoor unit on, uh, that goes up to about 65 or 64 when it's in steady state. When the inverter kicks over, turns on, or ramps up, or turns off, then you'll hear that go up. Turn the air conditioner on, drop the temperature inside. So one of the good things about the DC inverter driven technology is you don't have a huge surge current that comes in. When you turn on the old air conditioner I had, you'd have 4,000 plus uh, watts being applied. So that, that surge current is just huge. And here it just slowly ramps up and that's uh, good for the whole electrical system in the house. You don't have large surge currents. Okay, so this is the final walk around. Uh, i got a couple things I still need to tidy up here, but uh, it's 95% done here. Here's my little uh, rain shield here, and I need to wrap that insulation where I bent the pipe. I need to cut the insulation and bend the pipe. But other than that, like I said, it's, uh, it's been running for a year now. It's been really great. I only had a couple gripes about the system. One thing I didn't like is they didn't provide enough insulation on the line set. It came up kind of short here, so if you can kind of see there's about four to six inches of missing insulation, and that really does affect how efficient the system is. And you kind of see here, I kind of jury-rigged uh, additional insulation to kind of insulate those line sets to the, to the valve. The other thing I didn't like, if you look on the right-hand side by my hand there, I had to put a plastic bag on because one of the end caps was missing on the line set. Other than that, I thought it was a good system. This is all I got. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll put uh, additional videos up once I get the indoor air handler in.